Chapter 10 Imogen was fired up after her pep talk from Harper. She returned her skis to the rental desk and strode purposefully back to her car in the lot. Harper had already left, claiming she needed to relieve Bailey at the store. Imogen was extremely grateful for the return of her comfortable snow boots. Her feet were screaming at her. She continued to think about what Harper said to her. She couldn't understand why she was retreating into herself and giving Gabe the silent treatment. She wasn't her mother and never wanted to be. It wasn't like her at all. She was more of a confront-the-problem-head-on type of girl. Passive aggression and silent treatment were her mother's style of emotional immaturity. She shuddered with revulsion. She could be better than that. She would be better. Imogen was done letting some awkward moment push her away from her boyfriend and, more importantly, from spending time with her horse. It wasn't fair to Fortune that she'd allowed her personal life to prevent her from spending time with him for the last few days. She was ashamed of herself. Determined, Imogen decided she'd go see her horse, and if Gabe was there, well, then there was no time like the present to talk things out. The drive was quick down the mountain, the winding roads whipping by as Imogen went over in her head what she would say if she saw Gabe. She tended to be impulsive, overthinking didn't come naturally, and she found that the closer she came to the valley, the more anxious she got. Her palms were sweating in anticipation. What if questions raced through her mind? What if Gabe didn't want to speak with her? What if Gabe didn't want to work things out? What if Gabe had decided she was too much work? Imogen groaned, and her knuckles turned white as they gripped the steering wheel. The unknowns were killing her. She rubbed one hand over her heart, trying to soothe the ache that formed there. No, she decided. She wouldn't go down this black hole of depression. She was determined to spend time with her horse, and if Gabe wasn't there, she'd leave him a sweet note as an opening gesture. Yes, that was perfect. She didn't mind making the first move, as long as they figured this out between them sooner rather than later. Her next steps decided, Imogen turned up the music as loud as she could and sang along to the pop-punk band on her Spotify. Imogen's spirits were lifted by the time she pulled through the stone gates. Gabe's truck wasn't in the drive, so he was probably at work or running errands. She tamped down the pang of disappointment and drove straight to the paddocks. As she got out of her car, Fortune was already waiting at the gate, giving a soft nicker of greeting. She'd missed him terribly. Hey, buddy, she greeted as she got out of her car and strode over to give a scratch on his muzzle. He blew air out of his nostrils as she joined him, breathing him in in greeting. It was hard to imagine that only in September, Fortune had been hard to catch and dangerous to handle. He still had moments of unpredictability, but she found that he was incredibly sensitive to the human energy around him. If she were upset, he tended to be tense and spooky. His previous owner, Bianca, was a very goal-oriented person and had viewed him as an accessory, like her Chanel handbag. They'd had little connection in their interactions. As such, they didn't communicate well with each other. Imogen, however, made it her priority to learn how to be clearer in both reading his signals and giving her own. Knowing that she was probably too tense to be successful working with him, she took a few moments to breathe deeply and focus on him and only him. She had to leave all her other worries behind. As she did, she leaned against the fence, placing her chin on her arms, and let him snuffle her hair delicately. One of the things she found endearing about this horse was how affectionate he was when given the chance. When Imogen was sure she had her emotions under control, she opened the gate latch and walked inside with the flag they kept on hand for safety. Fortune was improving slowly, but still had moments of unpredictability testing her or Gabe by charging at them or snapping with his teeth. Under Gabe's watchful eye, they'd introduced the flag as a training aid to help with communication as an extension of her arm, but it also served to block him if she felt unsafe. She preferred to use positive reinforcement training with her bum bag and hay pellets, but the flag was a backup in emergency, especially when she spent time with him alone. Fortune paced back and forth in the enclosure, more animated than he had been recently, Imogen chalked it up to her absence, or, more likely, her nerves. He hadn't been exercised much due to the cold weather. Winter was a downtime for most of the horses in Vermont, unless there was an indoor riding arena nearby. 
Hey, buddy, she crooned again, softly. Fortune continued pacing, but his ear flicked in her direction. She walked over to the hay hut, checking on his feed before moving to his water bucket to make sure it wasn't iced over. She trusted Gabe, but knew he worked hard and left early in the morning for work. It had to have been hours since he'd fed them. After seeing his water was fine, Imogen walked to and stood still in the center of the paddock. It didn't take long for the horse to relax and walk over to her. She reached out to rub his forelock. Suddenly, a bang sounded behind her. Fortune screamed and reared up, his front hooves clawing dangerously close to Imogen's face. Quicker than she could move, he came back down to all fours, wheeled around and took off, bucking like a trained bronco, his feet narrowly missing her once again, before he galloped to the far corner. Imogen bent over, hyperventilating because of how close she'd come to those dangerous hooves, not once but twice in seconds. She was lucky to be alive. It took her a few moments, but she caught her breath, keeping an eye on her horse who now stood at alert, ears focused on the cabin. Backing slowly toward the gate, keeping an eye on the animal, she let herself out. Placing the flag back in its place, she then turned to look for the source of the loud noise and her near-death experience. There, on her boyfriend's porch, stood a tall, willowy woman dressed in cargo pants and a large hoodie, her short black curls down around her face. She'd almost forgotten about the mysterious Lopez. She must have walked out when she saw the car in the drive and let the screen door slam behind her. That shouldn't have been enough to scare the horse, but he'd already been amped up due to Imogen's anxiety. Imogen caught her breath while walking up the stairs as Lopez waited, her eyes giving nothing away. She didn't know why the other woman was here, or really anything about her, but it wasn't in her nature to be rude. She'd rather focus on the stranger than narrowly avoiding injury. If she thought about it too hard, she'd start shaking. Hi, um, we met the other night, sort of. I'm Imogen. Lopez eyed the outstretched hand. The redhead was short and curvy. She hadn't caught a good look at her the other evening, but she seemed harmless enough, and Gabe had clearly been trying to protect her, so she must be important to him. She clasped her hand with hers. Anita Lopez. Welcome, Anita. I just came by to visit my horse. Imogen gestured toward the big bay. Of course. Then she added unnecessarily, Gabe isn't here. Clearly, Imogen thought meanly, but she shook the ugly thought aside. She was trying, she reminded herself. I'm sure he's busy. I was going to leave a note, but since you're here, can you tell him I stopped over? Anita nodded. Wow, Imogen thought. I guess the military breeds the quiet type. That is, she assumed she was military. She carried herself straight and tall and had a stillness about her that reminded her of Gabe now that she thought about it like she was poised and ready to spring at any moment. Imogen let the silence hang a moment. Well, then, she slapped her hands against her legs. I've got to get home and back to my work. Thank you for giving Gabe the message. She walked away, feeling Anita's eyes on her back. That was probably the most awkward experience she'd had in a long time. She needed a glass of wine and a hot bath to rid herself of the memory.